This video has been sponsored by my Patreon patron, Chris. In every ecosystem they inhabit on Earth, big cats are the apex predator. This dominance marks them as the latest in a long history of carnivoran dynasties. Ambush hunting and a range of killing techniques, from strangulation and suffocation to breaking necks and skulls, big cats are surprisingly adaptable. Although not in the Panthera genus, cheetahs and pumas share many of the characteristics that make big cats so successful. Hyenas, canids, and bears all offer competition, but wherever they go, big cats are king. In Chimere, this is not the case. The resident apex predators, Megaraptorans, outweigh the largest cats by a factor of 20 or more. Defending their territories and kills simply isn't an option. In this new context, cats had to adapt. Most of that endured were arboreal specialists, with a maximum size based on their ability to climb out of range with their prey. The open forests of Titanosaur Gardens means that ambush predators like big cats aren't at as much of an advantage as they are in the dense jungles of Earth, but as the lion can attest, open terrain can still be viable for this body plan. The big cats we are familiar with today are not the first mammal predators with this body plan to find their way to success in the shadow of Chimeran dinosaurs. The first were the Nimravids, cat-like carnivorans, famous for their saber teeth and generally cat-like appearance, even though hyenas and civets are actually closer to cats than cats are to nimravids. The top predators of Earth at the time were hyenodonts and entelodonts. The large and aggressive members of each clade weren't able to compete in the dinosaur-dominated ecosystems, but these two and the small nimravids were all able to establish themselves as mesopredators in wetlands, prairies, and forests, respectively. Nimbervids are only survived in the known world by the kochu, a small arboreal predator that lives much like Earth's ocelot. Their diversity remains much higher on the eastern continent, with cursorial, arboreal, and even aquatic representatives. The descendants of animals harvested during the Oligocene, and their subsequent adaptive radiations on the eastern continent will be the subject of my next sponsored video. Barborophilids are a much more recent arrival, having come from Earth during the late Miocene. The phylogenic placement of these animals is still debated, with some listing them as a sister clade to true cats, while others consider Barborophilids to be derived nimravids. These saber-toothed predators were outcompeted in the known world with no living descendants, although a small group has established themselves on the eastern continent. Sabertooth cats, or Machairodonts, have generally not had success in Chimere. In the jerktooth cats in particular, these large teeth facilitate the grappling prey capture of megafauna. Cats cannot reliably defend their kills from 6 to 10 ton megatheropods, and the cockatrice dromaeosaurs are also a huge problem with kill defense, since one at a kill can quickly become 5 and then 20 and, like cats, are quite proficient at punching above their weight class. As is always the case, this trend had some glowing exceptions. Dinophilus has had several species, but only the subspecies harvested in Southeast Asia during the Pleistocene has seen widespread success. They replaced the existing Nimervid as a wetland specialist, with these days living much like a jaguar. They are extremely powerful animals, being heavily built which aids in both swift prey capture and caching in trees. Long canines powered by enormous shoulder muscles make them the only big cat to regularly hunt dinosaurs, with semi-aquatic parxosaurs and young titanosaurs being favored game by some populations. A bold stripe pattern marks their forehead, which is believed to assist in intimidation. The Picardiant subspecies is noted for more dense fur, a more robust build, and being overall quite large, at up to 400 pounds in large males while the Red Panthers of the Arveleth and Northern Wetlands is more gracile, although still stocky compared to most cats. The other breakout star of the Machairodonts is Homotherium. This cat was a prairie specialist on Earth, going so far as to lose full retraction of the claws for a better grip, a sloping back for superior endurance, 
and a massive nasal chamber for efficient breathing. They weren't able to establish themselves in their earth niche on Chimere, although being cachers due to competition with cave lions and more robust machairodonts gave them instincts that served them well. The open forests of the Titan Gardens, the most widespread terrestrial ecosystem in the known world, proved ideal for an endurance predator like Homotherium. They have serrated teeth, assisting in portioning out their kills, which they often bring down in small prides. They can usually dismember preferred parts of a kill and retreat to the trees or caves before dromies, hyenas, and other scavengers overwhelm them. Their climbing may not be as efficient as other cats giving their semi-retractable claws, but powerful upper bodies and clawed paws make them good enough to get out of the reach of Megaraptorans, dromies, and hyenas. There are two species of Chimeran Homotherium, one specialized for the Titan Gardens, and the other in the highlands of the western continent. The lowland Homotherium is much larger, and their groups are small, usually being just a few siblings of the same sex, and, in the case of females, their offspring. They excel at bringing down prey fast, portioning it out, and getting into a nearby tree. In the highlands, a smaller species of Homotherium is in many ways analogous to wolves. They are fairly small, but live in large, complex groups. They tackle a range of prey, but, as cave lions prefer caribou and takin, and spotted hyenas like horses, Homotherium, despite being the smallest of the three, shows a preference for the largest game in the ecosystem, the highland mammoth. Although usually targeting younger individuals, they can bring down even adult mammoths despite only weighing about 200 pounds, although these are almost always old or injured individuals. They must make the most out of their kill and retreat, since cave lions can outweigh them by a factor of five, and cave hyenas can often best them in direct conflict. Cheetahs were introduced to the known world, but were outcompeted by the hyena Chasmoporphetes, which had by this time specialized as a sprinter and, although not quite as fast, is much better able to defend their kills and cash meals from the safety of their dens. Although most members of the genus Lynx aren't considered big cats, one of the four species, the dire bobcat of the Picardian Highlands, certainly qualifies at up to 100 pounds. These generalist predators live much like the unrelated cougar of the Americas, being smaller when they intersect with red panthers and larger up in the mountains. Panthera is, as a genus, quite successful in the known world. Their ancestors hunted small game in the shadows of saber-toothed cats and other predators, and reverting to this niche as meso-predators came fairly easily. The big cats of this genus with the longest tenure in Chimere is the tiger. Although tiger is the translation of their imperial name, Dogash, the Chimeran tiger is a separate species. They came to Chimere from Southeast Asia around 1.5 million years ago. This point in tiger ancestry predates the orange fur and stripes we associate with the animal, and the Chimeran tiger retains the basal rosettes and ochre fur although these rosettes do somewhat resemble a striped pattern. Aside from longer canines and proportionally longer back legs, they only superficially diverge from earth tigers. Given that they are specialists of dense jungles and don't hunt in grasslands, Chimeran tigers do not have the pressure to develop the stripes that we see in tigers today. The Chimeran tiger once had a wider range, with several subspecies throughout the known world, but later panthers outcompeted them, and they are presently restricted to the crescent jungles and seritic wetlands. They don't have a full mane, but a line of hair along the top of their necks and backs makes them look larger without compromising their mobility in the dense rainforests. Weighing up to 500 pounds, they are the second largest cat in Chimere, able to support their size because the dense jungle homes offer many opportunities to hide kills without having to climb. They are solitary animals and hunt a wide range of prey. Two species of lion are also found in Chimere. During the Middle Pleistocene, Panthera fossilis, or the Mosbach lion, was introduced to the known world. They had a brief period of success, but it didn't take long for them to be outcompeted by larger theropods or more adaptable panthers. 
They are primarily solitary animals, although occasionally related females and unestablished brothers will hunt together. The cave lion is now restricted to the highlands of Arvel, where there are no established megatheropods to compete against, and they enjoy a small kingdom of their own. They are truly massive animals, with males weighing as much as a thousand pounds in extreme specimens. Sometimes a cave bear, pack of cave hyenas, or homotherium, or the enormous titan crow will drive them from their kills, but for the most part, cave lions are king. The other species of lion came from Africa in the late Pleistocene. They are smaller than their cave lion cousins. These adaptable animals pretty quickly shrank in average size, became solitary or had limited sociality, and males dramatically reduced their manes. For a time, they were the most widespread member of the genus, but this title was lost like so many before them. Unfortunately, the pressures of cockatrices mobbing their kills, especially since lions like to target large game and kills can take up to 15 minutes to accomplish, proved too much for them. Now lions are restricted to the southern islands, free states, a small population in the western forests, and Picardia. A boon to lions came when the first children called all of the megafauna from the Codrath Peninsula and constructed a massive wall, effectively isolating the landmass when combined with their predominantly fjord coastlines. Lions from north of the wall and island hopping from the free states recolonized the region, and shortly after the disappearance of the first children, lions dominated in this habitat with minimal competition. Modern Codrath lions have become social as savanna lions of Earth, and males once again support their majestic manes. Perhaps due to their social instinct, lions have been tamed by many Chimeran peoples, most famously the Codrath. During the Dark Ages, many families kept lions. They are hardly ideal pets, notorious for killing unknown people. However, by methods kept secret, House Nerotok breeds lions as companions and beasts of war, which are as tame and trainable as any dog. The first leopards, Panthera pardispalea, came to Chimere during the Middle Pleistocene. These European leopards are fairly large and robust, and spread throughout the known world. They had a brief heyday, but as I'm sure you're used to hearing, this was not to last. African leopards came to Chimera during the late Pleistocene. These mesopredators were used to hunting in the shadow of more powerful predators, and swiftly proved that Chimera was no different. Where leopards went, most of their large cats were outcompeted. Several populations of tiger, dinophilus, and lion went extinct. Even the first wave of leopards was outcompeted, and are now called mountain leopards since that's the only habitat these original leopards are still found in today. Common leopards are at home in dense jungle and housey prairie, in open forests, and near human settlement. They require less food than most big cats, reproduce more quickly, and can efficiently hunt an extremely wide range of prey. This adaptability has been a key to their success. As so often happens in Chimere, this new generalist came onto the scene and pushed the resident specialists to either double down in their specializations or go extinct. This is what happened when Barborphilids forced the resident Nimrvids to specialize. Then Tigers, Dinophilus, Homotherium, and early Panthera did the same to Barborophilids. Then Cave Leopards came along, then African Lions, and although Common Leopards came from the same harvest as the Lions, their conquest occurred about 100,000 years later, and Lions have since been forced into specializations as the other kings have before them. Leopards have been so successful that they now outnumber all other big cats in the known world by a considerable margin. In certain areas, other cats have specialized and thrived, with red panthers successful in the wetlands, homotherium common in the titan gardens, and lions and tigers each claiming their little corners of the world. But it is without question that leopards represent the optimal feline solution to the varied and competitive contexts of the known world as they stand today. Although there is a common misconception that black panthers are a separate species by both many chimerians and humans here on Earth, 
The truth is that black panthers are simply cats that have a mutation in their melanin that saturates their fur, which makes it dark. When you look at a black leopard in good lighting, you can clearly see their pattern is still present, the fur is just saturated with dark coloration. On Earth, black panthers are most common in leopards and jaguars, especially in regions like the Amazon and the jungles of India, where this dark pattern is often beneficial for camouflage as nocturnal predators. Melanism is fairly common among chimeran big cats, particularly those in denser habitats. Black lions make up a majority of lions in Picardia, for example. Leopards, lowland homotherium, Dinophilus, the tiger, and lions all have black panthers in their population. Hybridization is when two distinct species produce offspring. Among Panthera on Earth, this is rare in the wild, in large part because speciation is often initiated by geographic isolation. Even so, leopards share habitat with lions and tigers throughout their range, but interspecies matings are rare, and because males of Panthera hybrids are usually infertile, these unions rarely leave lasting legacies. There are some, however, as we can see a lot of big cats have distant hybrid ancestors. With so many species from different times and places sharing space, hybrids of Panthera species and subspecies in Chimer is a fair bit more common. Most leopards, for example, have both mountain leopard and common leopard in them, with the larger and denser furred Picardian common leopards between 20 and 50% of their ancestry being of Panthera parda spilea, even though this leopard was outcompeted on the island overall. The small size and prevalence of spotting in most lions, as well as their propensity for melanism, is because of early hybridization with leopards, as well as neoteny, or the retention of juvenile traits in adult animals. Tigers also have a small amount of common leopard in them, along with several now extinct panthera species, but it's fairly minimal. Homotherium and Dinophilus don't have any recorded hybrids within panthera, but since leopards and pumas can have albeit unviable offspring that suffer from a range of morphological and genetic challenges, it is theoretically possible. For all the dangers of Chimer, big cats represent one of the most frequent killers of people. Particularly among leopards and lions, man-eaters are fairly common. It is presumed that this is because African lions and leopards that were ancestral to the two most successful of these respective species had a long tenure of hunting humans back on Earth. Homotherium and red panthers almost never turn to humans for prey. Tigers occasionally go man-eater, but it isn't common, and they tend to avoid civilization. Lions and leopards acclimate fairly quickly to people, however. Among other big cats, man-eaters are almost invariably injured by traps or in fights with competitors or prey, and they turn to livestock and then their caretakers for easy meals. Some leopards and lions, on the other hand, appear to simply view chimerans as a viable food source. For a time on Picardia, hunting lions and leopards to kill man-eaters resulted in not only the deaths of innocent animals, but many of these animals were injured in hunts and were forced to become man-eaters themselves. The panther cults among the Picardian outlawed the killing of leopards as a condition of their inclusion in the Confederacy, and in exchange they led targeted culls and relocation of man-eaters. This effort has dramatically reduced man-eaters in Confederacy lands, although leopards and lions remain a serious problem in other regions of Chimere. As happened with many animals, Litter sizes seem connected to available resources, not to threats, so leopards in particular will have more cubs when they are culled, and as the Picardian found, random culls often create man-eaters. For a time, imperial, free states, and republic laws listed leopards and lions as menaces, and they were hunted aggressively. Although some man-eaters were killed, this often resulted in the deaths of mostly innocent animals, and prompted an unnatural selection of more cautious and lethal cats to survive and thrive. Like the panther cults of Picardia, House Niratok of the Kajarath Republic has dedicated hunters to man-eating lions, and have many preserves where lions can live without much interaction with humans, and cases of man-eaters are quite low in this region of the Republic. In the past century, House Niratok, 
a guild of hunters led by the famous hunter of man-eaters Nasiri, and members of the panther cults have campaigned together throughout the known world on how to selectively hunt, conserve, protect against, and relocate big cats so that people can be safer while still respecting and cooperating with these dangerous yet ecologically important animals. These efforts have greatly reduced man-eaters and improved relationships between chimerans and big cats through the efforts of hunters and conservationists. There are still issues that arise, conflicts between farmers and leopards and villages and lions, but the coalition has improved the situation to the point that such events are now comparatively rare. Although chimerian big cats do not enjoy the dominion that they have in the ecosystems of Earth, many have established themselves as rulers in albeit more consolidated kingdoms. They are adaptable, formidable, and powerful animals. Even though they must survive in the shadow of dinosaurs, they have more than proven themselves competitive. Thank you so much to my sponsor Chris. A deep dive into the big cats of Chimera is something I've wanted to do for a while, and I was so excited when you reached out to be my first video sponsor. My next sponsored video will go live towards the end of the month, and will explore the legacy of Chimera's most unlikely harvest, the one which occurred in the middle of the Tyrant Dynasty, bringing flora and fauna from Earth's Oligocene. I'm very excited, especially since it'll introduce a lot of the clades now prevalent on the eastern continent. If you are interested in sponsoring a video on a clade, animal, culture, or harvest in Chimere, don't hesitate to reach out and email me at theillustratedmenagerie at gmail.com. Links in the description. I'm also working on the cockatrices and an overview of some of Chimere's gliding fauna for Gliding Fauna Week hosted by Paleo Curiosities. So a lot of exciting Chimere content coming your way. Thank you to my new patrons Kevin, Link, Reina, Andrew, and Stonebone, who has sponsored the Oligocene video. Your support means so much to me. Also thank you to everyone who's watching these videos. Between Patreon and ad revenue from YouTube, I'm able to dedicate a lot more time to world building and these videos. Your support means more than I can say. And here's a quick word from Huxley, one of the big cats in my house. Huxley, what do you have to say to these fine people? That is an excellent point, Huxley. Thank you for that moving statement. That's all for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay fantastic, you delightful people. Cheers, folks!